Hi guys and welcome to another set review. Yes, I'm going to try and do as many set reviews as I can over the course of 2019. Hopefully you've had a chance to watch some of the other ones I've done. Uh, any feedback is welcome because I want to make them as good as I can and uh, this is kind of a new thing to me to be honest. Um, anyway, with Spider-Man Far From Home coming out in a couple of weeks, I'm very, very, very excited. Um, but I'm going to get back onto the sets because I want to review this. Uh, it's the Hydra Man Attack set um, it comes with an elemental it comes with a awesome spider-man Peter Parker variant it comes with MJ it comes with another Mysterio um, hopefully you've had a chance to watch the Molten Man review that I did uh, there's also a written review on lifeandbrick.com um, I'm gonna jump into the speed build as soon as that's done I'll come back and we'll talk about it in a bit more detail So there you go folks, that is the build. Um, I have to say it was one of the most enjoyable builds I've ever done in terms of the actual scenery. Really enjoyed building it panel by panel as you would have seen in the uh, kind of time lapse. Um, it's considering, I mean, let's have a look. I'll show you, just give you a good idea in terms of scale. It's a fair size and you know, something that's got that much of bridge you would kind of expect to be quite boring, but yeah, I love this thing. I absolutely adore this thing. Um, and of course, this guy is awesome. Um, <laughs> but before I kind of just jump in, and I've just dropped a bit, uh, before I kind of jump in, I will go to the pictures and we'll, we'll show it in a bit more detail um, because we've got to go through this, my new favorite Spider-Man minifigure, which, there you go. Hopefully you can see it. We'll go to the pictures in a minute. Uh, we get another Mysterio and MJ and, of course, this guy. Um, where to start? Let's start with Mysterio because let's go to the pictures. You can see, well, um, it's exactly the same as what we get in the other two sets. So you get a Mysterio in every single set and they are identical. Um, that's not to say it's not awesome, it's just that if you're buying all three sets, it, you know, with every single unboxing, it gets a, the wow factor kind of goes down. But it's an awesome minifigure, so it's very hard not to kind of like it. Um, I've already gone through it in the previous video, but essentially, you know, the armor, the armor printing on it, uh, mixed with uh, obviously the fishbowl head, is very much what we would expect of Mysterio. If you've uh, watched any of the cartoons from the 90s, Spider-Man cartoons from the 90s, or you read the comics, or anything like that, you know what Mysterio looks like. Um, even if you played the Lego games, he's, he's uh, in uh, Lego Marvel Super Heroes 1, I believe. Um, so, it's what we'd expect. Uh, the only difference here is, much like the other characters, so like Thor, like Iron Man, even like Spider-Man to a certain extent, 
we get the upgrade of the armor. So um, it's it's not like in the comic books. I mean, the comic book versions of minifigures tend to be nowhere near as detailed. Um, so let's compare it to, say, the Flash from the Justice League sets. So the Justice League movie sets, um, the minifigure that comes with that is very much, you can see the plating of the armor. It's very much more photorealistic in the sense of they, they're trying to show as much detail in the armor as possible. Um, whereas in the comic book version, you see kind of like the muscle uh, lines for the Flash and his Flash logo, and that's about it. There's not that much detail in there. Um, so we go back to the pictures. You can see that with, um, with Mysterio, it's exactly the same. I mean, in terms of the actual printing, this isn't actually that far off what we've seen from Iron Man printing. It's just different colors. Um, also, looking at it from the sense of the color scheme, it's it's very much darker as well. Um, so, you know, the comic book versions, you're getting very bright colors. Uh, you know, you, in Mysterio, you get very bright purple, you get very bright green, you get yellow. Uh, whereas this, we've got gold mixed with a darker green, a darker purple. It, it makes a difference in terms of going for a more, shall we say, grown-up look rather than looking at the comics. Um, it looks really good. I mean, my one and only... It's not a downside in any sense, but you always find with characters that have got uh, capes, so he's got a cape, there's some awesome printing underneath and it always goes to waste because you've got the cape. Um, I mean, go back to the pictures, you can see it. It's an all, it's awesome printing in the sense of, again, it follows what you'd expect from the armor. Um, that's pretty much it. Like I say, I have already reviewed this minifigure as part of the other set, and I'll probably do it again when I get on to the jet set. Um, jet set. Um, much more importantly, let's move on to the other minifigure. Like I say, this is now my favorite Spider-Man minifigure because it's awesome. Um, go to the pictures and you can have a look in a bit more detail. It's... It's Peter Parker, but I, I don't know. I just love the, the helmet piece. So the helmet piece you get, it, it's just like a normal hat that's been printed with the Spider-Man uh, eyes on it. But they've kind of, it's not just a hat in that sense because there are textured, built into the plastic, there are textured kind of uh, ripples. So it's like creasing. So it is like, he's kind of pulled it over his head. Um, and the detail that's gone into that, considering, it, you know, for that piece, it's just for that piece. Um, yeah, it, it's awesome. Um, you know, the whole thing together looks really cool. Uh, I mean, you can see the Spider-Man suit underneath his kind of casuals. The rest of the printing is very much kind of civilian casual. He's, you know, he's got a shirt, he's got a hooded jacket, um, and completely non-printed what look like jeans as the leg pieces. So even though the rest of it isn't overly exciting the whole thing together makes it look really cool um and like i say the uh spider-man printing underneath very much like uh have you seen any of the clark kent minifigures uh so he's got a suit and you can see the superman suit underneath uh very much the same on this um the only thing i did find is the actual printing is a slightly different it's not quite scaled the same as the actual spider-man suit printing uh, so the logo is a little bit different. Um, the only thing I can do with that is either they've just not done it to scale, or it's hinting at another suit, because we've seen so many suits are coming from, with uh, the Far From Home uh, movie. So, yeah, he might be wearing the black and red suit, which would look pretty cool. Um, but yeah, highly recommend this set for this Peter Parker variant because it's amazing and it's unique and it's exclusive, unlike Mysterio. Uh, similarly on exclusive, we've got MJ. So um, this is not Mary Jane Watson for all you Spider-Man purists. This is Michelle who we saw in Homecoming. Uh, if you go to the pictures, you can see it's quite a generic minifigure in all honesty. Uh, in terms of the way it looks. Obviously, the interesting thing on here is it doesn't have the, the kind of female waistline printing that you get on most of the other characters, uh, female uh, minifigures, that, you know, based on female characters. Um, and I think the reason for that is if you look at the character in the movies, look at her in Homecoming, she wears very baggy outfits. So, you know, there's no need to kind of do waistlines because it's a baggy outfit. 
Um, the other thing of interest really is the fact that the, the skin tone on the hands and on the head is uh, exactly what we would expect uh, from someone of uh, kind of mixed ethnicity, I can't say ethnicity, um, like the actor uh, actress who plays her in the film. Uh, so it's not you know, it's not dark, it's not light, it's it actually works really well and I've not seen that specific kind of tone on a minifigure before. Uh, hair, I've seen that on a minifigure before but in yellow, uh, interesting enough, I've not seen it in black but it's a good minifigure. If you look at the face, so we go back to the pictures, if you look at the face, um, you can very much tell that this is that character from the movie. You can very much tell it's that actress. This kind of snarky look. If you look at just the, the cheeky on one side, you've got kind of like a cheeky mouth, uh, kind of with one cheek slightly up. And on the other side, you've got the, the eyebrow, <laughs> which pretty much does it. But other than that, great character. Um, it's It doesn't need to be in this set, but it's in there so you can get an MJ minifigure. It's the, there's not really much else to say about it. It's quite a generic character. I mean, if you if you put that anywhere else, it would fit in and without anyone going, oh, it's MJ. The best part about this set for me, yeah, well, actually, there's loads of good parts with this set. But one of the my favourite things is this guy. Um, so this is a, the Hydra Man. So he's one of the Elementals. We've seen him in the trailer, but the scale is very, very different. So uh, in the trailer, he is a massive kind of water monster. I don't know. We don't know because we haven't seen the movie where he shrinks down at any point. Um, but this is they've done it more based on a minifig, and they've kind of given him a plinth which looks very very cool um i wouldn't say it's a bad thing that it's not just like the movie because at the end of the day they could have gone with this kind of style so this is molten man yeah you may have seen the review um he's gonna fall over um, but they could have gone with that kind of a build but then it would have made the two sets very very similar um and i just think this kind of works i mean they could have built something in between so you've got obviously uh, the giant man from the uh, the civil war sets uh ant-man as giant they could have gone down that path and there's something like that but i like this it's very very cool there's a lot of stickers on here i will admit i don't like stickers but in general i mean if you go to the pictures you can see in a bit more detail it's a fun build i mean it's not symmetrical and it looks like a whirlpool of water um, and I think they've done that really, really well. It's just stacked pieces up. And you know, it's not the most exciting build, but it's still fun. Um, and the end result is something that looks very, very cool. I mean, I'm quite tempted to use this. Um, if you watch uh, any of the other videos, I do do an Instagram page where I just do random pictures every day based on Lego. I could quite easily use that with Aquaman. Um, and it would look pretty cool having him come out of the water. So... Bit DC Marvel kind of crossover. I'll definitely reuse that for that. Um, but it's very cool. I mean, also, if you look at the minifigure himself, the printing on him is very, very cool. Um, so from the waistline, obviously the legs, there's no printing on it. But then when you've got him in here, to so come back to me, you, you can't see the legs. So it kind of, they just kind of fit in. So from the waistline upwards, uh, you can see kind of splashes of water. And you can see like the, the chest and the six pack. It's all done in a way that makes it look like liquid. Uh, I love the printing on this thing. It's very, very cool. Just the, the two-tone blue. That's, it's very, very simple. Um, and it's both front and back. Uh, the, the, the printing is superb. I mean, it's a very unique looking minifigure and I love that. Um, I like exclusives. Like I say, we've got three exclusives in this set and usually it's the minifigs uh, that can really sell a set. This set is sold by the minifigs easily, but it's also got a really cool build, which we'll go on to in a minute. Um, but yes, yeah, so that's Hydra Man. Looks very, very cool. As I said, don't worry too much about the scale difference between what you see in the movie, because in terms of how this fits in, I'll show you a picture right at the end of the whole set. As this fits in, it's the perfect scale for the set. Um, anyway, let's move on to the, the main build. And i tell you what, I love it. I've, well, apart from the fact that pieces have fallen off just now because I put it down wrong, um, actually, before I get onto this, where did I put that? Where did that go? Before I get onto this, we've got a gondola. The gondola is, it looks really, really cool. Go to a picture. Um, 
It's really, really simple build. So if you built any of the Pirates of the Caribbean sets in the past, um, you built Robo, exactly the same, but with the arch bits on the side. And those arch bits do make a bit of a difference. Uh, it's a nice little add-on, but it's not... It's obviously, it's needed for the Venice setting, but, you know, if it didn't have that, it wouldn't be the end of the world. This thing, on the other hand, is stunning. I love it. Uh, I mean, just the bridge. You've got this really cool kind of archway system here. Uh, you've got this coffee shop in here. The detail on this kind of tower bit here is superb. Uh, there is some interactivity. I'll go into that before we go into the pictures. So the interactivity is you can flick people off. Uh, so if they're sitting on that chair, there is a chair missing actually. Where's that gone? <laughs> oh dear, I'll find that in a minute. Uh, you'll see it in the pictures anyway. But yeah, you see you can flip people off. Like, you, can, you can basically press that down, they go flying off. Uh, similarly on the back here, you see there's a ping thing here. Um, and basically when you push that, it collapses the bridge and I've now lost part of the bridge. Uh, but we'll go to the pictures. In fact, I'll show you a video. Um, if I show you a video and you can see it in a bit more detail, that's probably the easiest way to do this. Let me just put this down. Um, so if we look at the video, you can see in a bit more detail on how the interactivity actually works. My favourite part about this is just the sheer, the detail on the thing, because there's so much of it. Um, so if you look around, I mean, you've got uh, this tiny little mouse thing down here with a bit of pizza and a crystal. I don't know how the crystal fits in, but we'll find out. Um, like I say, the archway... I love that it just does what it needs to do. Um, I won't go into too much detail because you can see it. Um, moving around the coffee shop, and well, the coffee shop's a bit spartan. Look at the coffee machine, it is superb um, for such a small build. I mean, the coffee granule uh, kind of holder bits, all they are is you know, you get these little um, posts. Uh, it's a little signpost uh, pieces. It's basically a stick with a one stud on the end of it. That's all they are. And it just looks awesome. My only pet peeve is the fact that the stickers are used for the logo and uh, obviously the newspaper that's sitting there, but that's because it's very, very specific to the set. Other than that, I wouldn't worry too much uh, if you're not a fan of stickers like me. Um, one of the other big things about this set is you'll see all these exposed studs um, all the way around it. Now, while part of that is to make it look a bit more rustic, because these aren't brand new buildings, this is this is Venice, this is supposed to be ancient, some of these buildings. Um, but the, the good thing about them is it essentially allows you to play Spider-Man, it allows him to crawl up the walls. So, if you're someone like myself that's a collector, going more for display purposes, or kind of doing photography and stuff like that then you can essentially put spider-man in a number of different positions and it just works um but it just looks nice on its own anyway um the build itself is fantastic it's so much fun but the biggest part about it is the fact that you've got all these simple little things and they make a massive difference they've gone for simplicity is best um, pretty much the Lego standard anyway, but you know you get a lot of complex sets some uh, scene builds are really complex um, They've not done that here. They've kept it really simple I mean you've got a couple of uh, chairs and a table, but it's the the bits around it. So you've got um, This bit here. So the gate the great um, The safety guard really really simple, but it makes it look nice with the lamppost. It's perfect and the the build's quite simple. It's very intense in terms of time consuming, as you would have seen from the speed build, but it's it's really simple. Every single part of this set is just a simple build, and it's all these little simple things that make an epic scenery piece. My one and only kind of pet peeve about this set is the fact that they could have easily made a whole blue plate. I don't like the fact that you've you've got two bits I want a full scene basically so for the sake of one blue plate they could have made that a whole scene um, I mean luckily I've got lots of different kind of bits of blue um, and blue base plates anyway but I don't know it'd just be nice just to have it so you've got the whole scene there um, other than that, there's not really a lot of bad I can say about this set I mean I love the minifigures I mean these, these guys are awesome and like I say this guy's a brilliant bad guy. It might not be movie accurate, but it's still awesome and it looks fantastic. Um, so there's not really a lot I can say bad about this set in all honesty. 
Um, so yeah, that's it. I mean, it's a passionate rant again. I know I say it's a review, but it's more a passionate rant. Um, but yeah, so that's that set. Uh, if you want the full details and you want all of the information and you want to look at the written review, uh, there'll be a link in the video uh, to the written review that I've done, which is fairly lengthy and a bit more detailed. This video is just me going, hey, this is a brilliant set. Um, but yeah, it's the middle set in terms of price. I think it's 35.99. Uh, in pounds, uh, so it's probably around $39.99. It's the mid-range set, so we've got the the jet, or we've got the Mortal Man either side, so this is kind of the mid-range set, and i tell you what, in terms of build, it's definitely my favourite out of the three so far. Um, I will review the, the jet set, it's, it's a cool set as well, but this is my favourite of the three Far From Home sets. Anyway, so there you go, my passionate rant, um, and I yeah, you know, I'm keeping these set reviews going. Uh, please do leave feedback in the uh, in the comment section. Let me know if there's anything I can do to make these videos better. Um, please do subscribe if you haven't already. Please do uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video or if you found it helpful. And as I said, there's a, there'll be a link in here to the full written review. So if you want to go to livefrombrick.com, it'll be on there. So it'll give you a chance to actually read more rather than me just ranting. Um, but yeah, highly recommended set, um, especially for this guy. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye for now.